All right, hi everybody. Uh, so I've got I've got a lecture up there, one A and one B, and now I'm going to try to do another lecture. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's um, not exactly a lecture. I'm just going to record a work session. Actually, I'm going to try to describe what I'm planning on doing here. Uh, a lot of times. Um, Yeah, that sucks. All right, I'm back again. Here I go. I am recording. Okay, I cannot do that. Okay. So uh, let's see. I am, I think I'm screen sharing. Am I screen sharing? Let me turn that on. All right, I'm recording. All right. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, just give you some more material here. And um, you're welcome to skip this video. It's a kind of an experiment, although it's a type of experiment that I've done in the past, where I just get, enter into a work session and uh, try to solve problems and just show you, I'll show you how I work. and. Um, you know, the knowledge that I have, skills that I have, and what I'm trying to do, you can, you can watch me, you can see me debugging and checking documentation and so on. Now, why do I do this? Why am I doing this? Because I think the, the best thing, the greatest thing that you could get out of this class or any class is to learn how to learn on your own and to set your own learning goals and to uh, carry out, design your own experiments, uh, decide what's important to you, and, um, and, and, and become more, more self-reliant and uh, less, less reliant on others telling you what to do. Yeah. Less reliant on me telling you what to do. Other professors or other teachers or other authorities telling you what to do. How do you deciding on your own what to do. And uh, to me, that's, 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 if I could help you become more self-reliant in that way, uh, I would feel like I've accomplished something in this class. And that's, that's that is a kind of a, just to reveal uh, my, my, what I would consider in my, my mind and my feelings is that, that that's the highest priority, that's the, that's the that's the greatest thing that I could could uh, offer to you as as a professor, as a teacher, as a as an instructor of this course, because this is the kind of material, uh, this uh, computer programming, software development, you really do need to, in my opinion, my experience, you really need to become self reliant. You need to set your own learning goals. You need to develop your own kind of uh, 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 discipline. So that said, I'm going to just launch into a little work session here. And uh, here's coming back to these course assignments. Uh, it goes up through Git, J JavaScript, and JSON. You know, I know this stuff really well. And then uh, Node.js, I've done a lot of work in Node.js, although recent changes to Node, I'm a little behind on, but I'm still pretty strong in that. Firebase, I know practically nothing. And Cloud Firestore and the web app based on Firebase. That's, so I'm, I'm like you, in a sense. I'm, I'm trying to break into learning something new. So as you see me work, keep in mind that I'm not, although I may have expertise in JavaScript, JSON, Git, Node.js, I'm very weak in this area of Firebase. So you get to see me struggle with um, trying to learn something. So I set this, this course, this, this list of course assignments is really my personal learning goal that I set for myself. And I, I just said, well, okay. I, and one reason I set that is because I thought it would be very useful to all of you and I may be able to make use of it myself. I'm kind of interested in video game development. 
And um, I looked at this, these technologies here, this Firebase technology in particular, it's, uh, it, it could provide potential, it has potential to provide a very easy way to implement a turn-based multiplayer game. I mean, that's pretty neat. You know, to implement a turn-based multiplayer game, I think you could do it with one developer if you uh, relying on Firestore and other technologies, you could come up with something uh, pretty interesting. Just one person working alone is quite amazing. I mean, just, you know, some years ago, you wouldn't be able to do it as an individual. You'd have to have a lot more skill than you need now. So right now, the, you know, to, to be able to, you know, over the years, as the technology evolves, you can do more and more with less and less effort. Uh, and it all depends on this, these, this, these systems, this, these very complex systems, you know, like your operating system, the computer operating system. You know, we, we rely on the computer operating system to, to provide a lot of functionality, and we don't really question it. We don't dig into it very deeply. Although we do have a course, you, you need to take a course, depending on your major, on operating systems. And you look at the details of how to implement an operating system. So that, that is, of course, important. But in general, uh, we're, we're working on top of an operating system. We're not digging down deep inside. And of course, when technology, when the computer technology first came out, there wasn't really a concept of an operating system. There was just programming this machine and these uh, structures like operating systems, and uh, you know, database, databases and uh, web servers, all, all of this is, uh, these are systems that grew um, incrementally over time and added so much complexity. And so we gotta pick the, 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 there's so many layers of, uh, of complexity that these things are built on top of. It's hard to, um, or may not be reasonable, especially for a young person to, to thoroughly understand all of the different layers, although it would be useful for you to do that if you had that, if you had the time and the skill to do that, and uh, and that's one of the benefits of of going through a degree program like what you're going through right now is that you're exposed to a lot of um, layers of the of the system that of these systems that give you some some insight into what's, what's going on underneath the covers. And that, that helps in particular with debugging. And it also helps with in the design process because you don't want to be doing something on a, on a higher level that, that really is uh, uh, maybe it's inefficient because the lower level is some, some problem with complexity. Maybe there's like an ON squared operation that you, inadvertently are hooking into and there's a way around that. So knowing the deeper levels is very useful. But, um, but more and more, you know, as the technology moves forward, we can do a lot at the higher levels. So this sequence of activities and using Firebase for the database and authentication and for other features as well, is uh, very high level, it's very cutting edge and high level. And, and so it gives you a lot of um, ability to, uh, to do a lot. And implementing, for instance, implementing a, a turn-based multiplayer game, I think would be, um, it's worth looking at these technologies for that, that particular application. There's other applications you can think of as well, of course. Anyway, I'll uh, keep talking there. I'm going to go ahead. I want to show you, I'm going to just start digging into this Firebase business. And I'm going to try to develop a very simple app that, um, that does something simple. Uh, but before I get into the details of that, we're going to do, the first thing is we'll do is authentication. So I want to basically go through the exercise of implementing a simple a uh, web application that uses Firebase authentication, one form of authentication that's available to us. So let's see, let's take a look there. Okay, so let's go for this. 
and I'm going to go to the Firebase, Firebase, uh, Firebase console. There's something called the Firebase console. Now I already have an account. You need a Google account for this. And I have been tinkering. I have not been tinkering a lot, I have to say. I've only tinkered a little bit. And I have two projects here that I played with, not extensively, but enough to get me going for today. So these are projects. And if I memory serves me correctly, I I can create five projects. I can create up to five free projects. I think you can pay for more. So I'm just using the what's available for free. I mean, when 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 you really use Firebase for a real application and you've got a lot of traffic based on it, you're going to need to start paying money. So they they're they're they want to collect uh, fees for this, and but they make it very very easy to get started for free, and you can do a lot. If you don't have a lot of clients, you can actually um, have a nice application running, which is useful and is free. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's create a project. Let's create a Firebase project. And let's have a name for the project and I'll call it uh, ServeProg for server programming. And I don't know why it doesn't like that name. And it gives us this other name here. It has some sort of a, a random identifier, but I'll just accept that. Okay. So this is surf prog. Oh, surf prog. I wanted to make it surf prog, but anyway, that's, uh, can I back out of that? Surf prog, surf prog. Eh. I'll take it. Enable Google Analytics for this project. It's recommended. I think I'll just leave it in there. And uh, let's see, Google Analytics, a free unlimited analytics solution. Okay, I think we're just gonna leave that in there. I've used it before. It, it's, uh, you know, basically um, kind of like letting Google monitor your application and, and report statistics to you. And that's probably useful to Google because they get to see, they get, they collect a lot of information. So we're all aware of that, that Google and these other big companies are, are, um, they want to see more and more and more of what we do. And they try to understand, they try to understand the users uh, with all that data for what, whatever purposes they have. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And configure Google Analytics, select an account. All right, it's that one. I got one to pick. And let me create the project. Serve prog. Serve prog. Provisioning resources. So it's setting things up for me. Let's see what it comes up with here. My internet connection is a bit slow. So for you, that might go faster. Uh, my new project is ready. I continue. There it is, serve prog. All right, so this is called the Firebase console. You can see the URL up there. And this is where you access uh, your projects and configure them. Uh, through this interface. And um, now the project, you think about this, the project is actually a collection of apps. And you can have, here's an example, you can have an, an app that runs on iOS, an app that runs on Android, an app that runs in the web. And look at this, you get an app that runs in Unity. So it's a, it's a Firebase is, got a lot of facilities to uh, connect directly to Unity. So there's a lot of Unity support in Firebase, which is quite interesting. So you can have an application, you can have a project here rather, and your project can have a single database 
and yet it's got an app that runs an iPhone, iPad, an app that runs an Android, an app that runs in the web. So, but they all, all these, these, these three apps all share a common database, common authentication system and so on. So this is very convenient. So what I'm gonna do here is not develop for the iOS or the Android, I'll add those on later on. So we can just basically add those on. I'm gonna create an app for the web. And uh, okay, so what is the app nickname? And I'll call it surf, I'll call it uh, surf prog web. And that comes up red for some reason. Let's see, what is that rep? Also set up Firebase hosting. And I'm gonna do that because you might be interested in that. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And uh, that's where Firebase hosting, see when, if we don't have Firebase hosting, that means we are, we're the ones that gotta host it ourselves. And we can always develop locally and look at our app locally. But uh, if you use Firebase hosting, you can deploy your app uh, to the uh, to a public uh, and to give it public access. So you, you, de you deploy the app into Google servers where it runs. It provides uh, general public access, you know, through the internet. So we're going to do that. We'll set that up, and let's go ahead and do that. All uh, right. <laughs> Copy and paste these scripts into the bottom of your body tag, but before you use, but before you use any, you know, oh, but before you use any Firebase services. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead, oh, there's a little copy function right there. So I'm gonna copy that. So this is needed. This is needed in the web application. All right. I'm just gonna make a note of that. All right, let's see, uh, maybe, let's see, where am I here? Yeah, this is where I wanna be. And I have a new, um, I'm gonna create a temporary file, I'm just gonna call it T. I'm just gonna paste that in there. I know where this goes. I don't have a place to put it right now, but I'm just gonna save it. That's, that's their recommendation. Okay, so we got that saved and learn more about Firebase for the web, get started, all this, there's a lot to read. A lot of this I've read through already, so I'm just gonna skip through that. Let's go to next. Install the Firebase command line interface. And uh, I've done that already, but if you're going to use Firebase, you're gonna need to do this. To host your site with Firebase hosting, you need the Firebase command line interface, run the following NPM. Now I've done that already. So if you have, in order for this to run, by the way, you need to install Node.js. So Node.js needs to be installed. I'll just take to show you where that is. That's Node.js, I think it's .org, there you go. This is big, Node is a big important development platform right now. So. And let's see, recommended for most users. Well, if you don't know much, then that would be the one to pick right there. And so you're gonna download that and get that installed. So, and Node runs the command line. Yeah, so I'll show you, I'm, I am running Node. I'll just, if I run Node uh, minus V for version, there it is, I'm running version 12.16.1. And 12.16.2. You know, they're, they've already upgraded it, so I'm not gonna bother with that. It's probably the changes don't make much of an impact on me, but you could get the more recent one. All right, and the docs are here. They're hard to read, I have to say, my opinion. And I've got different versions. This is the one that they're recommending, closest to what I have. And this is the documentation on Node.js, so. These are the Node.js modules right here. Lots of things to look at.
right? I'll show you the ones that are important. Well, that one's kind of important. I use that a lot because I, I run Node not as a web application, but just as a kind of like a sysadmin tool sometimes. So I use the file system uh, module quite a bit these days on some other projects I'm, I'm working on. And uh, for doing the web, web business, you're gonna need this stuff here. More important, you gotta use this HTTPS. If you're, if you're not going through a hosting environment and um, sometimes, well, with Firebase, I don't have to worry about this. It's all kind of automatic. We don't have to worry about generating public private key pairs and, and um, configuring HTTPS. That's, uh, you know, you have to manage your certificate and your private secret and so on. But with Firebase, it really alleviates the need to have to think about that. It saves a lot of time. And so you could end up just using this package here. So you're, you you're you're writing your code in kind of a uh, without the security without without security but but you're you're insecure you're unencrypted rather your unencrypted communication that that you've designed your app to run in is converted into uh, an encrypted uh, communication with the outside world through Firebase. Uh, so it's it's very listen just one example of how firebase uh, or systems like firebase can provide a lot of convenience to the developer you don't have to bother with this so that's good and some other things uh process everybody needs to use that at some point and um that's about it so you don't need a lot from there of course events is important and, uh, but I don't want to get into the details right now. Let's get back to here. So I've already run this, but you would need to run this. NPM, NPM is a node package manager. It gets installed when you installed Node.js. So it's the package manager for Node. It's one of the reasons why Node is, is popular. And uh, because it's got a very good package manager. So NPM is important. So you use NPM to install the Firebase command line tools. And this minus G is, I think the G represents something like global. And it, it, it lets you access uh, the tools from the command line actually. All right, let's move forward here. I can deploy now or later. To deploy now, open a terminal window, then navigate to or create a root directory for your web app. Yeah, let's let's deploy now. So we're gonna sign in to Google. So I'm gonna use Firebase login. I could copy that or I could just type it in, okay? So we can we need to log in to Google. All right, let's do that. So I'm gonna do Firebase login. Now I've already done this and the login is very persistent and I'm probably still logged in. I'm going to see what happens if I try it again. And already logged in. Okay. So what, but you're going to need to do that. So it's a very, it's a persistent login. I really only had to do it once. Now if I, if I work on multiple machines, I'll need to log in on each machine. Oh, look at this, update available. So run NPM, ah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's get the, let's get the update. So this is, you know, the last time I ran this, I didn't see this. So let's go ahead and get that. This is Firebase, Firebase tools. And let's go ahead and update. And while that's running, I'm going to come back to here. So initiate your project, run this command from your apps, root directory, Firebase init. So, you know, I got a terrible internet connection, but it is still working. I need to work in a different room in my house. This, this room is, uh, doesn't have a good connection to my wireless router and I should have, Thought to set up in another room, but anyway, here we go. Let's, uh, we'll live with this. All right, so it's, um, it 
seems like it's running pretty slowly. So I have to initialize, let me, let me see what will happen here. So once we log into Firebase, then we have, we've authenticated our machine, our device with, uh, with Firebase or Google. And then when we run Firebase init, it's going to generate a, like a skeleton of an app and it'll be like a hello, hello world program. So it's just going to give us a hello world program that we're going to be able to deploy it here. There it is, Firebase Deploy. What Firebase Deploy does is it, whatever you have running locally, uh, you can test it locally. You know, you run a local web server and you're all in your private network, just on your local machine and you're testing. And then when you wanna push or deploy your app to the hosting environment, then you do that. Use the Firebase Deploy command to do that. And if, copies everything up to the to the remote to the remote server and then makes your app available through the public internet so is this thing still working so slow Ugh. all right i'm gonna live with this uh if i shut down to try to move my i'm probably not even gonna i probably get distracted and do something else i gotta do this okay Let's go ahead, now notice that we just updated NPM and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna clear and show you what's in there. So I think there's nothing here right now. I mean, there's the readme and there's that T. That's the, that's the stuff that uh, I copied. And you'll see actually when we, when we do this uh, init, I'll try the Firebase init, that it will uh, probably generate this a version of that code for us. So we won't even need to use that. So Firebase init. Now it's going to ask some questions here. Which Firebase command line interface features do you want to set up for this folder? I press space to select features and enter to confirm your choices. There's two different databases and you can only use one of them. You either use the Firebase real-time database, or you use the Firestore. The old one is the real-time database and the new version of this, uh, of their database system is uh, called Firestore. That's the one I'll be using. And we don't have to install it right now. We can, we can always install it later. We can, we can run this init script later on and then add the, uh, the Firestore functionality to it. So I think I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to keep the application real simple and we'll, we'll attach the Firestore um, later on. Okay, so then we have another choice here. So you, you can't choose both of these. You got to choose one or the other if you choose any. And I'll, we'll come back later. I'll come back later and I'll select this Firestore. Maybe not in this session, but maybe in another, in another session like next week or something. So now this functions 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 is very interesting and i started to tinker with that what that does is it's uh, these you write these functions and you write them for node.js these are node.js functions and so they, they basically uh you know they run on the server side and so you 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 have a you've got you've got the javascript or a TypeScript or whatever script you've got running in the browser, but ultimately it runs JavaScript, okay? TypeScript compiles to JavaScript, right? CoffeeScript is JavaScript. So these other, uh, so as you're running in the browser, a lot of, you've got like a heavy uh, client implementation. So you've got a lot of code that's in the client. You push as much, the strategy there is to push as much code as you can into the client, take it off the server. You don't want it to run on the server. You've got a distributed application. You let your clients, you know, uh, use the client resources, use the client CPU, use the client storage, use, use the client resources as much as you can so that you'd spend less on the server side. So you're making these like heavy clients so you push all the logic, but there's certain things that you can't push to the client because that's a security problem, right? People can, 
I don't know, cheat in your game or, you know, whatever. They, you can't put all the functionality into the client, only that which is, uh, can be safely put to the client. So the functionality which you have to have on the server, you can write your own server, develop your own server, say in Node.js, or can use something like this, uh, this uh, cloud functions facility. So that's what's available to you. This is optional, by the way, all these, there's so many different ways to design these, uh, these Firebase apps. This is quite interesting. So you don't have to use functions, but if you want to use them, that's, uh, they're here. And uh, so I'm not gonna get into that right now, uh, other than what I've already said, and, uh, but these are quite interesting. Hosting, yeah, well, we're gonna need that. So I just space barred on that one. So we're gonna configure and deploy Firebase hosting sites, yeah. So we're gonna use Firebase to publish on the public internet. Storage, this is cloud storage. So make use of cloud storage. You can imagine, let's suppose you've got uh, a video game and in your video game, you let the user take snapshots, right? So you're generating a lot of image data. Uh, you don't want to store that in your server, in your database. You want to push it to the user storage, the user cloud storage. And so that's what is going on here. Well, it doesn't have to be user cloud storage. I think it's all, I think you have a choice. You can either use user cloud, although I haven't looked at this, so I don't know. I have not experimented with this, but I'm just guessing you can either have those snapshots of your video game stored in the user cloud storage at the, ex the user pays for that expense, whatever, however that's done, or you can store it in your, the developer's uh, cloud storage. Probably that's a choice. Now I haven't looked at that in detail, so I can't say it now. Emulators, set up local emulators for Firebase features. Yeah, we want to do that. So we want to, this, this allows us to test locally and then once we get our app running the way we want with the, in our emulated environment, then we deploy, we push um, the changes to the app or the initial app, we push it into the hosting environment. So we want to have emulators and that's it. Those are the two features I'm going to install. And let's say, I guess I have to hit enter on that. Oh, use an existing project, create a new project, add Firebase to existing. I want to use, uh, so create a new project. I guess I'm going to use an existing project. I think I need to use an existing project. The one we just created, please select an option, use existing project. So there it is, serve prog. So, you know, I created this project through the console, but actually, apparently I could have created the project right here at the command line and then see it appear in the console. I believe that that would have worked just like that. So let's go ahead and I'll select that. What do you want to use as your public directory? So this is going to be like the web server. This is a typical name, public. So when you're running a web server, you've got a folder. Generally, it's called public. And that's the, the, those are the files like your CSS files, your JavaScript files, HTML files, things, the static resources static file, files that don't change. That's where you put it in this public directory. And they, they use the word public because it, it's, it may be password protected, but it, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going in general, it's, it, it's used for as a, as a storage location for those files, those objects uh, that are delivered through the web server to the uh, to the browser or to the mobile apps. Configure as a single page uh, web app. And I think, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do, look, the default is N, the default is no, is no. And I have not yet tried yes. And I do envision doing this demonstration project as a single page web app. So I'm going to choose yes for the first time. Let's see how that works. Emulator setup. Which Firebase emulators do you want to set up? Press space to select the emulators. Enter to confirm your choices. And we're going to emulate the hosting. And I don't know what is PubSub. Don't know what that is. 
So I think we'll wait on uh, this fire store. You know, maybe we need to use fire store right from the very beginning. I'm not sure about that because I th to, to have authentication, I think you might need fire store. Let me go ahead and try this without that. And uh, we'll see how it works. Which port do you want to use for hosting the emulator 5000? So that, that's your local, that'll be the, the port that we connect to on our local machine when we're testing, when we're running the emulator. Would you like to download the emulators now? Yeah, well, that'll be slow, right? And I already downloaded the emulators. So go ahead and pick, uh, I'll pick Y on that anyway. It's already downloaded, so I don't have to worry about it. So look at this, writing configuration info to firebase.json, writing project information to .firebase.rc, writing git ignore file, dot, look at this. You know, git has gotten so pervasive. Everybody seems to be using it. So you should be thankful that I'm requiring, that's the one thing I'm pushing on everybody. I'm pretty open about do whatever you want, but I'm pretty strongly, a strong advocate of learning Git. You know, if you learn nothing else in this class other than Git, that's consider it a win. Uh, Git is just everywhere. Look, they, they, they generate a, a, a configuration file, an important configuration file for a Git repository. So dot git ignore. Maybe they noticed that I had a repository already set up. I think maybe that's why they did that. And maybe if I didn't have a git repository set up, they, they wouldn't have done that. So maybe that could be the case. All right, so I'm gonna list this and there it is. See, there's the um, firebase.json. Here's the public folder. And this is my temporary file. All right, so, um, if we go into the uh, LCD into the public folder, and uh, there's index.html, let's take a look at that. Just a bunch of stuff. See here, these. Oh, good. I was concerned about this. I wanted to make sure authentication was in there, and I I didn't see it as a choice. I thought maybe I needed to set up the Firestore or the real-time database. Apparently, I can. I can have authentication without a database. And what is going on here? Why is database added here? I don't know why. I didn't select any database. But that is there. Messaging, that has to do with sending notifications, like you know, when your browser pops up a notification, uh, and some other, other uh, uses of messaging. And this is Firebase storage. I don't know why all these are put in there. I did not. Maybe it's just boilerplate and it's just dropped them in there. And uh, so this is where you load the scripts, the libraries for the different, um, different pieces of functionality that are available through Firebase. And once you load those libraries, you need to initialize everything. So that's done right here. I want to take a short break right now and I will be right back. Let me uh, figure out how to pause. How can I pause? Pause. I don't want to stop recording. I want to pause recording. Hmm. Don't see how to do that. Is that it? No. Let's see. Oh, here we go. I am going to Pause recording, be right back. All right, <laughs> okay, I'm back. So uh, this is, now if you look at this funny notation here, I mean, this is interesting. This is, um, this isn't gonna work on a regular web server, but because we're running in the emulator, the emulator or the, the hosting system, will uh, read this notation and uh, take care of these, uh, these URLs for you in some appropriate way. So just leave those alone. It's hard to make sense of these. But this is, uh, you wouldn't be able to use this uh, notation without using the, uh, the hosting environment or the emulator. Okay, so this is where we 
this Firebase app, this is required. This is, this is required. Look at update the version number is needed. And this link is required. I like to simplify things. Include only the Firebase features as you need them. And there it says it right there. So we're not gonna need, we're not gonna need these here. And we're gonna just take those out. We don't need a database. We don't need messaging. We don't need storage. And uh, so we can, we can take those out for now. Later, we're gonna add the uh, Firestore, Cloud Store, I think they call it. So this one is, I think I'm just gonna take these out. Let's go ahead and, yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure, I'm very confident I don't need those. And uh, so here, include only the Firebase features you, as you need them. See, I already know this, so to me, it's, uh, it's, it's messy. You know, you might wanna leave those comments in there for yourself. Initialize the SDK after all desired features are loaded. So there it is, okay. This is required. This is your core uh, app code, I guess, and then, this is because we're going, to use, we're going to start by just implementing authentication. And then we have to run this init script right there. Okay, so then we have all this business. We'll cut that out in a minute. And we'll just take a look and see how things are running here. And uh, yeah, this is, this is interesting. We can go through this in a moment. So there it is. Um, I'm gonna, I'm using screen here, so. To get this thing, let's see if there's any information here. Continue to the console. There's Firebase deploy, but I'm gonna skip a little bit here. I know if I go, if I do Firebase serve, what I'm doing here is I'm launching the local emulator. So this runs the local emulator so we can look at our, our system uh, using the local, so here it is, the local server, this is the URL right there, port 5000. Notice it's not encrypted. We don't have to worry about that, because once we deploy it, uh, Google's going to wrap our deployment in an encrypted uh, setting. And this thing is getting in my way all the time. I think I'll just go through here. So there it is, hit enter. And this does not look right. This looks like my other application. This is my other application, so I don't know what's going on there. What application is it running here? Isn't that interesting? So 5,000 doesn't seem to work. Hmm. This is my other application, so I don't get that. And look for um, stuff going on here. What is going on? Oh, there we go. That was a cached. Let me explain what just happened. I hit refresh, and now I see this here is what we were just looking at. See, welcome Firebase hosting setup. Well, I'll prove it to you. I'm gonna copy that line and I'm gonna go into this index.html file, all right? And we're gonna search on that line. See it? Firebase hosting setup complete, right there. That's, um, so we're looking at that file. But what did we see just a moment ago? Well, that, that was the cached business from the experiment I was doing in, my, in another uh, project. And I, when I opened up the, the console, developer console, well, the developer console doesn't, because it, 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 you know, when, you, when you're hitting cache stuff, it, it'll really mess you up as a developer. You don't know, well, am I looking at the old cache files or am I looking at what I just changed? 
Uh, so you got to make sure that your caching, your browser caching is turned off when, uh, when you're developing. Now the default uh, for this, this developer console is to, um, to keep caching turned off. So we could probably find that somewhere. Maybe it's under network or something. Where would that be? Let's see. It's uh, probably up there. Clear. Where? Oh, here it is. Disable cache. See that? And look at the highlights. So you read that. Disable cache parenthesis while dev tools is open. That's the default. You got to be careful. Sometimes you turn that off. So you want to test caching. Sometimes you need to turn that off to test the, the effect that caching has on your app and how your app is handling it. So you, but in general, you got to keep that checked so that, um, that the, the browser, as you're doing development, you don't want to, uh, you want to make sure you always have fresh, uh, fresh objects, you know, that you're rendering in the browser. So we're going to disable caching. And by popping open this, um, uh, this developer console business here, that um, you get that caching uh, turned off. And that's why this thing popped in like that after I hit refresh. Okay. Let's, uh, so anyway, there's that. Open the hosting documentation. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I click that thing. There's the documentation for, uh, for Firebase. It's, uh, it's quite extensive. Um, and I've read through a bunch of it already. And this is something that if you want to learn how to use Firebase, you're going to need to spend a lot of time reading through this stuff. And uh, here's it getting started. I think I read through that. Managing your Firebase projects, understanding Firebase, all this stuff. I read through a lot of this, but not all of it. Actually, this stuff I'm not sure I read very much of. And uh, I don't know what this is. Analytics. Yeah, I used to, that's something that's kind of print, maybe important. Extensions. I don't know what an extension is. Use an extension in your project. Let's see, what is an extension? It helps you deploy functionality to your app quickly with pre-packaged solutions. And so anyway, I'm not going to get into that. This we're getting off this extra stuff. So here, this would be under uh, guides and stuff. And then there's a section heading here, develop. Okay, and the top authentication. And it's not alphabetical, but authentication is at the top because that's that's it's a foundation for your application. It's going to be authentication. That's the first thing you do, and it's one of the hardest things to do, I have to say. And uh, when I was teaching teaching this class in the past, it's hard to do anything unless you do authentication first. But authentication is more complicated than everything else. So you start with the hard stuff and then you get into easier things. So we're gonna do the hard thing. We're gonna do authentication. And uh, so I spent quite a bit of time in here uh, learning about that. And here's, look at, take a look. I'm just gonna run you through this doc, these docs here. If you're going to use the real-time database, here's the documentation for that, but they recommend against the real-time database. That's the old solution. They recommend against it. There are uh, uh, cases when you want to go back and use the old database. So, you know, that's, that is keep it as an option. Don't just rule it out automatically. But I think in general, Cloud Firestore is going to be a better choice, and it's what they're pushing in any case. And uh, it's quite interesting. So we're going to get into Cloud Firestore. This will be important. Storage, this has to do with the uh, cloud storage. It's different. The real-time database is like writing in little pieces of data. You know, it's designed for pieces of data, little things, documents, maintaining information about your users. But you're not going to want to store like a video clip in a database. I mean, you could, but it doesn't it's not the right uh, uh, machinery to rely on for that. You want to use this uh, cloud storage, bulk, giant cloud storage facility that's available through this, this uh, that's available through this um, system. But we're not going to look at that. Hosting, well, we started using that already. 
So uh, this is uh, hosting uh, documentation, cloud functions. I talked about that earlier. This is, these are your Node.js uh, code that is deployed into the um, Google servers, the Firebase servers, and it runs in their server environment. It also runs locally in the emulated environment as well. So those are interesting. Those are very interesting. ML kit, uh, that has something to do with um, AI, you know, text recognition, face recognition, barcode scanning, all kinds of uh, interesting things in there, natural language processing. So that, that's quite interesting if, if that's something that you think is uh, useful and it certainly is getting more important. So you might want to take a look at that if you want to dig in deeper. Security rules, this is uh, important and I've been kind of negligent, negligent on this. So I'm, I'll need to do a little bit more reading on these uh, security rules. That's an area that I haven't uh, touched yet, uh, but I got to get to it. So quality stuff, you know, I haven't, I'm at such a beginning point that you know, I haven't even looked at that uh, grow. And this all looks very interesting, doesn't it? And um, you know, cloud messaging, this looks very interesting to me. So uh, I'm gonna skip over that. We're gonna focus mainly on this authentication. This is the, this is the part we're gonna focus on. Anyway, I got off on a slight tangent from what we were doing, although we're gonna get back to that in a moment. So this, this pay, all it gives us is that little link right there, but it gives us a little more. If you look at the console, and what is this down here? I don't know what this is. I'm just gonna, a drawer. I'm gonna close the drawer, all right. Uh, I'm gonna refresh that again, see what happens. Nothing, there's nothing in there. And look at this. Uh, here's the code. This is the code that runs. Let's make sure that this is. See, see here. It says, it says welcome. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Watch. It's going to just check the welcome X. All right. I'm going to save that. I'm going to reload the page. And there it is. Welcome X. Just to verify that you know we are where we think we are. All right. And Firebase hosting complete. I'm just gonna cut this garbage out. There's no reason to hang on to this. It's just text. We put anything we want in here, uh, unless it's useful to us. And there is some stuff which, are, which is interesting in here. This is the link. See this underscore blank, target equals, that, that caused that thing to open in a separate window. When we clicked on this, it popped into an, a separate window. We got it out here. And uh, if you take that out, you won't get a separate window. Uh, I'll demonstrate that to you. Watch that. Take that out. And I'm gonna refresh this. All right, I'm gonna close that. Now if I click on this, we won't pop open a separate window. We're gonna stay in the same window, see? Now just to, just to, just to show you the kind of experiments you might wanna be doing. All right, so we're going to get rid of that. And uh, this is a div with an ID equal message. All right, we'll just leave that there for now. And uh, what the heck does this say? This ID equals load. See this ID. So that means they, they, they mark this paragraph for some reason. So they're, they're, uh, they're using this for something. Let's see, Firebase SDK loading. We don't even see that here. Firebase SDK loaded with auth. I think that you'll see this, this P, this paragraph is written into somewhere down here. There it is, see? Just get element by ID, load. Yeah. Get element by ID, there's, there's the ID, load. So once we, once we get this element, this load element, we're gonna set its inner HTML to Firebase SDK loaded with, and then it's got these features. Well, let's take a look at that. Loaded with, what is it gonna say? Loaded with auth, see, auth, that's only one feature it's been loaded with. Now, I'm confident going through this, because I actually the first time I ran this thing, I, I went through here and I did these experiments, so. 
and I, I go, oh, that's, that's neat how they did that. And uh, let's see, and we want to spend time with that. Let's see, maybe. Let's spend a little time with that. So this is, uh, let's, let's try to understand this code here. Now this is all a, this is a comment here, right? So we don't, this, this is all commented out. But uh, ooh, look at this. So this is for connecting to the database. This is for doing messaging. This is for the cloud storage. So I'm going to take this out. And this is the, this sample right here. That's probably what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take this out of here. And there we go. So that's, this is basically what it looks like for us. It's just a comment, but this will be a function that we're going to want to call uh, at some point in the future. And I'll show that to you. So then it goes into this try catch block. Okay. So JavaScript uses exceptions and you use try catch blocks to handle exceptions. All right, let's take a look at that code. I think it's kind of interesting to look at. So the first thing they're doing, so uh, let me back up a little bit. So this web page is very simple. It just says welcome. It says welcome in this div with an ID equal to message, by the way, and still says welcome. Okay. So we could somehow put something in there, but I don't see that they're doing that. Maybe, maybe this is used by the CSS to, uh, to do something. And, um, but this load, this ID load is used in this script to do something. So that's where we're at. Okay. So the, you know, this, this is like a loading screen, Firebase SDK loading. And when the Firebase initializes, then it's going to say, ah, yes, Firebase loaded with this. And uh, let, let's do a little trick here. This is very interesting. Let's try this. So this, this code right here is, um, well, what we could do is, was we can, uh, this out event listener. So this, all of this code in here, this is some, this, this runs on, uh, uh, you know, when the, the, this, see this document, document, that's the web page. It's the document. All right. That, that's a pre existing variable that's that references what's called the document object. You have heard of the document object, DOM, the document object model. This is the document object. It's a reference to a JavaScript object that lets you interact with the page itself, right? the document itself, the web page itself. And so we, what we do here, so in, on this document, we register an event listener. And this is the name of the event. The name of the event is DOM, content loaded and the function that we're going to register is this function just just to want to break this down so we just play with this a little bit right and just to see how things work so we add event listener so it's the type of event okay that's the event type which is dom document object model as it just means a web page it means the web page is loaded dom content this is the the dom content this paragraph this div this h2 uh, you know, the, 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 the CSS, the, the, you know, the head section, everything in there, all of those objects need to be loaded. And, but this script, this event listener, we want to listen. The browser is going to, is going to broadcast this event. It's going to trigger this event. It's going to fire. There's the word I was looking for. It's going to fire this event. Dom content load. It's going to fire that event. Once the web page is ready to be manipulated. And uh, so, and it takes a function. I'm going to call it F. So we want to register function F. So, so F should run when this DOM content loaded event is fired. All right, now we got to define function F. Well, that's this function down here. All right, this function F. So it was an anonymous function because we, we embedded the function definition right inside the second argument to the function. That's uh, and we and so we didn't need to name the function because we we're using it as an anonymous function. We only we only needed to uh, uh, we didn't need to name it. 
because we could um, you know, define it. And the definition of the function, when it was in here, the definition of function, uh, when, it's, when it's processed by uh, the JavaScript engine, that it, it, it resolves that function definition as a reference to the function. And that reference gets passed in to add event listener as the second argument. That's why we didn't have to name it. So we call it an anonymous function. But here, we're going to name it. We have to name it here. We're going to name it f. And then, and then we, we have the variable f, which is going to store the reference. So, so when we define the function f here, we, we're creating a variable f. And the variable stores a reference or a pointer to the function. And we're going to pass that function pointer in to the add event listener method. So this is what you need to do. This is how you break things down to try to understand. Otherwise, if you don't break things down, it's just a big, it's like soup, you know, with lots of little vegetables and noodles in there. It's all a big mess. I mean, you got to sort of start picking it apart and looking at the details to really master this. So here's the function f. And what does the function f do uh, here? Look at this, this. This is hard to read this thing, isn't it? So when function f runs, it's going to do all this stuff. Okay. All right. And let's see if we broke things. I'm going to save it. Come to here and reload. Ah, uncaught syntax error, line 46, unexpected token. So look at that, look at this, look, see? Firebase SDK loading, I actually wanted to show this. So this is the original state of this, um, of this paragraph. See, Firebase SDK loading. It never, because there's a, uh, uh, an error in the code here. This was rendered, but this line here, right, where we, we get the load element and we set its inner HTML to this, that never runs because we've got a syntax error. It couldn't compile, it couldn't compile the JavaScript that we put in there. So we're going to fix that. And I know from experience the problem is right there. So like a highlight, it's a VI, I'm using VI. You want to use a different editor probably. And this is a VI and it shows, this is a matching brace, see? And when I reorganize the code, I, I left that parenthesis in there, but that shouldn't be there. So I'm gonna take that out and let's go ahead and save that. And, uh, and but before I reload, I'm going to clear my console because I, I don't want to have to see the old error messages. I'm going to clear the console and then I'm going to reload this thing. And let's see. Ah, yeah. Look at that. No error here. That means it compiled the JavaScript. It ran the JavaScript and replaced the, the loading with this, uh, with this node. Firebase SDK loaded with auth. So now we're, we're, we're breaking this thing down. All right. So let's look at what, what does F do? Let's look at what F does here. So under F, we, uh, let's see, we, we got this try catch block. This, we, first thing it does is it calls firebase.app. And that must be some kind of initialization. And that returns, oh, that doesn't do initialization. No, no, no. That just returns an app object. See? Now they use let here. When you use let, it means you can, you, can, you can assign app to something else. But nowhere in this code are they assigning app to anything else. So that means we could, we could actually use a const on that because we only set it once. I mean, let me show you that. It's the same, same thing, see? Oh, oh, but if we did try to set it to something else, you know, if we did try to set it to something else, see that? Then it's going to give us an error. Assignment to a constant variable, not allowed. All right? Gives us the line number there, line 44. Go to line 44. There it is. Oh, that's the, the, the this is the line it shows us. But this is where it's coming from. Now, 
if that was a let, then this allows that reassignment. But by allowing that reassignment, then this is going to fail right there. Let's see that. Let's see that fail. And um, once again, I don't want to be confused with the old error messages. So I want to clear the console first. And then I reload. And Firebase SDK loaded with nothing. And uh, it doesn't show any uh, error messages. It's a surprise. So let's see. It must somehow this did not trigger a you know any kind of a syntax error or anything like that apparently uh, setting app to string we can we can still use this notation and it, it results in something who knows what so this this is it says firebase sdk loaded with nothing right so because this code is not running correctly so I'll take that out save that reload Firebase SDK loaded with auth. Okay, now it's, it's back to where we were. And I demonstrated why const is a better choice here. You could also use var. You know, var will work as well. That's the old style. That's the old style. And you'll see it works the same. See that? No problem. And there's another choice. The other choice is you don't have anything at all in there. Now, when you do this, this variable app gets promoted into the global namespace. And uh, so let's take a look at that. Firebase load with op, no problem. You can, app can be in the global namespace. There's no other variable called app in the global namespace. By the way, this is equivalent to this window.app. So, Window, just the window object is uh, a reference to what's considered a global namespace and things that are global identifiers, function names, variable names, identifiers that are considered global are also attributes of the window object. So this is equivalent. Let's verify that. Okay, same thing. You see, the, I'm showing you experiments this is how we do experiments to verify our understanding all right that's what that's what it's all about trying to get everybody to do experiments that's why i want you to be recording your experiments and uh, putting them in uh, in your github repository so i can take a look at them i really want to see the experiments that you're doing i'm very interested in seeing that and uh so please do that so here we go. I'm going to set it back to cost. I think that would be considered best practice, even though the boilerplate code doesn't have it in there. The same with this features. You know, that's uh, that could be. Wait, wait a minute. What did I do there? That is the. Um, that's the same situation. We're not changing uh, features anywhere, or are we? Or are we? Uh, feature? No, we're not. So the features, oh, let me verify that. I better save it. Don't do, don't do too much changes without verifying things. Yeah, okay, so that's good. Uh, so, so this gets a reference to this app object. And see, I'm still recording. Okay, so then we, once, let's see, let's see. We got an app object here. That's like the Firebase. That's like the entry point in the Firebase API. That's where you get it everything in, in Firebase. And, um, Let's see, just like window, it's similar to, to window in a sense. A window will let you get at everything that's in, in uh, the, the JavaScript API. For instance, that document is a, that document variable is actually a, a globally scoped variable. That means it's, a, it's an attribute of the window object. And so I'll just verify that. See, no, no, no change there, right? See, but you know that's uh, that's makes longer code, so we don't we don't always have to put that in there. All right, let's look at uh, features. Features here, they're defining an array. Look, they're defining an array. Aha! Uh -huh. So the the array has got one, two, three, four elements in it, and then it it then it evokes this filter, this filter method. And it passes in this uh, 
this function. So let me see if I can reorganize this to make it easier to look at. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, how am I going to reorganize that? It's just hard to read this, isn't it? Let's do this. So I'll just drop this down like that. And uh, maybe I'll do this. All right, reorganize a little bit. And um, like this, this, this here is, um, it creates this array with four items in it. Then it invokes filter, the function filter. This is a JavaScript array function filter. And uh, what it does is it filter reads through your array one item after another. And for each item it encounters, it invokes this function that you pass into it. And this is a function in a very kind of compressed notation. And uh, so this function runs for each item in the array. So, and so the feature, this is, this is the item, see? So I, I'm gonna do a little bit more here. So this is, just to break this out, it's a little hard to read, so I'm gonna just do this, and just to isolate that for you. Uh, so we have this, um, we have this array. i just put it up there. And then uh, we're gonna call filter on the array. In fact, Let's just do it like this. this uh, let's do it like this. We're going to do features equal that array. And then we take features and we set it equal to features dot filter. Now, in order to do that, I'm reassigning features. So this can't be const. That's got to be let because this is not constant reference anymore. First it refers to the array, and now we're gonna make it refer to the array that's returned by filter. So what filter does is it runs through the array and applies this function to create a new array that's been modified. And let's, let's just check that that's working okay before we go any farther. Ah, uh, there's an error. Okay, line 46 features. Cannot access features before initialization. That's in line 46. Let me look at line 46. And cannot access, oh, there's the problem right there. That dot, all right, there we go. See, it's good to be checking at each step along the way. There we go. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot to, uh, forgot to clear the, forgot to clear the, the thing. We got to clear the console. There we go. All right, got to take a short break again. I will be right back. I'm going to try to keep the momentum going here. All right, let me pause this thing. Where do I do that? Pause recording. And it's so hard to find. I don't know where this thing is. There it is. Uh, pause recording. Be right back. All righty, I think we're back. Yeah, I think we're back. Am I recording? I'll assume I'm recording. So let's continue this thing. We're looking at this, um, this array features. And um, just to show that to you, you know, if we made that const, you see the issue there, right? I, I, I don't want to belabor that point. So let's move on. So what do we do? So this function, this is this function runs for each item in the array and ends up, um, you know, building the next array. So we'll do something like so. What this function looks like is um, it it is this is the shorthand version and this is this is how you would uh, uh, write it in the old syntax. This is function. Uh, that takes an argument feature and then and then it returns no, just return it returns this and uh, let's go ahead and close that no nope, that's not right it's here 
and this is where it's closed. All right, see that matches with that brace, that matches that parenthesis right there. And notice this is, we could terminate that line with that, or we could leave it off, it doesn't matter. And I think more people are starting to leave these off, but it's tricky. And um, I think I'll leave it off. I'm gonna start leaving these off too, just to learn a new way to, uh, to code. I've, I've always added these, uh, these, these um, semicolons at the end of the line. Sometimes they're necessary. So in, I'll give you an example, unless you're running in strict JavaScript, I think that this will be a problem. So when it hits this return, it actually looks at it like this. And uh, so this is one of the issues with JavaScript in that return scenario. So if you want to put something on the next line in a return statement, you got to use a parenthesis there. Oh. Yeah, there we go. So that'll work. Anyway, that's just the, uh, oh, we're not, we don't need that. I'm gonna take that out. So the filter, once again, the filter, this, this feature, that's just these items. The filter becomes auth and the filter says database and the filter is messaging. Let, let's prove that to ourselves and do this. Console.log feature. Now I'm just showing you how to, trying to show you how to do experimentation, how to digest uh, example code, how to, how to, how to dig in and, and try to assimilate, you know, some, some new information through, through experimentation. The console.log feature, this should print auth and database and messaging that storage. Let's see if that works. And I'll print it in the console, which is down here. And it does not do it. Oh, SDK loading. Oh, there it is. There's some delay there. Yeah, you know, like I said, I got bad internet here. So there was some delay. So there it is, auth database messaging storage. So that's what happens. This function runs for each item in this features array. And uh, so what do we do? So for each item, we return the type of this. So what is that? Oh, you know what filter does? It's filter, the return, you need to return true or false. So the new array has only got size, uh, size one. Let's take a look at that, I'll show you that. So we're gonna do console, dot log features, so, oops, sorry, features dot length. So I want to see the size of the array. Whoop, there, I'm putting that semicolon in. And uh, so this should show four, right? This should, it should print four. Print four. And then after we run this filter and we print features length again, it should print one. And uh, let's verify that. First, I'm gonna clear the console. And here it goes, it's slow, remember, loading. Four and then one. So we got it. Now what's going on there? Why did it do that? Well, because the, uh, the filter, what filter does is you got to return uh, true or false. So ba basically what it's doing is it's, it's not changing the items. It is uh, just picking out a subset of the items and creating a new array from that subset. So it's creating a subset of items. So if we want an item to be in the subset, we return true. That looks like this. 
that we'll do this. We'll say um, if if the type of app feature, right? So there it is. I'm gonna let's do it like this and make it easier. Just sometimes it's, it's helpful to break things down. So I'm gonna do uh, I'll do const feature equals app uh, feature. You know, that's confusing. That is kind of confusing. So let's do it like this. This function, this, this thing here is simply one of these items. So I just call it, uh, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it a, uh, it's sort of confusing. Let's see, it's going to be the, uh, well, let's call it I for item. So, you know, when we first get to auth, I is set to auth, and then I becomes database and so on. So that I, those items in the array, you pass into this app, right, a Firebase app object. And, um, so that returns, so this is, this gives us, this app is like an array of features apparently. So we, so we use this app as an array and uh, we list out its, uh, its features. So let's see, uh, is that right? This is not right. What is it? And now I'm confused, uh-oh. So app of I, and we're gonna pull that out and then we're gonna test to see if app of I, all right, the feature will be uh, like a string. And, oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is this array, okay. So can we find, oh, so the app is an array, functions as an array, and we will pass in the name of a feature and um, it'll return that feature. Oh, I see. If that thing is a function, what the heck? Yeah, this is hard to understand. So if that, if type of feature equals function, then return, uh, return true. Right? Otherwise, uh, don't, don't, otherwise return false. Let's see if we get the same result. It's getting pretty confusing. It's hard to read that stuff, isn't it? All right, so when I, I'm trying to practice leaving off the semicolons, let's see if it still works. It works, I got the same result. Oh, it's kind of hard to figure this out. So this is this app, ob, Firebase app object, and this is my array of features. And I want to get rid of that. That's confusing. As so we run through for each feature, we check to see whether the feature is in there. So, you know, I'm going to do something completely different here. I'm going to show you. This is kind of like my style. I like to define a a uh, a function called um, assert, and assert takes a condition. And if the condition is false, uh, then we got an error situation. Okay, then we're gonna say, if the condition is false, we could do a number of different things. Let's do console, uh, console.log assertion failed, all right? No information about the assertion, just that. And, that's all we're gonna do. So that's the end of that if statement. And uh, actually I wanna make it a little, I'm gonna make a nice compressed function here. So if the condition is false, then we print assertion failed. And that's the end. And that's our, that's our assert function. All right. 
So I'm going to rewrite this code so I can understand it better. Uh, maybe you can understand it better. What what is it they were doing? They were they were very very clever. You know the sample code they gave you was, in my opinion, excessively clever. It's hard for beginners to understand it, and I'm not a beginner, I think, and it's hard for me to understand it. Got to spend so much time parsing it. So here we go. Let's uh, let's do it like this. What we need to do is once we get this Firebase app, see, now we assert that the app uh, auth, so we can find auth. Uh, uh, app auth, actually, that's a function, see? App auth, let me take this out. Here. App auth is, is a function. This should be a function. So app auth, and they're saying the type of this thing is a function, right? So um, let me just to explain this. Maybe I should do this. If we do console, console.log app auth. Now that's going to print, it's going to print something like function, right? It'll look like that. And then if I print app of database, right? That's the, the second item in there. It's gonna, I, I'm just guessing here, okay? So I'm gonna say it prints, whoops, uh, here we go. It's gonna print undefined. That's what I think. Because, you know, when we, when we configured our application, we didn't, um, up here, we didn't register, you know, here, here we, we loaded the auth library, but we did not load the database library. So the auth, this, this lookup gives us a reference to the auth library, entry point to the auth API. And this would normally give us the entry point into the database API, but we didn't load that module. So we didn't load that script. So that won't be defined. So that's why I think it'll be undefined. The rest of this is skipped. And then we do this thing here. This is, this is gonna be, I'm going to say Firebase SDK loaded. This will, you see, we, we've taken, we've eliminated features. So. I'm gonna to have to take that out. And uh, see these tick marks here? I'm gonna get rid of that because that's for, that's a, that's a JavaScript feature where you can use, uh, you know, insert things into a string. So I don't wanna get into that right now. I'm just gonna say Firebase load it. And just so that we see it's us, I'm going to do that. All right. <clears throat> it's us. So I think this is going to print undefined. I think that's going to print function. That's, that's my hypothesis. Now let's run the experiment. You design the experiment. Let's run it. And there, look at that, see, that's nice, it's us. And there's the F and there's the undefined. So looks like I nailed it. <clears throat> and so what I wanna do here actually is uh, turn these into assertions. So I'm gonna assert that this thing exists. Now, see, anything that's not zero or not false and a bunch of other things evaluates to true. So I could pass in a function reference here. And when I try to, when I, when I use it as a Boolean condition that it'll be interpreted by the JavaScript engine as true. So this assertion, so this, this will, so the condition comes in as 
true. So uh, we go not true, that's false. So we don't execute the, uh, we won't execute this. The condition is going to be true. And I can, but in this case, let's do this one. In this case, it's going to be false. So that one is going to be false. Because here, undefined, when we pass undefined in, this condition is now undefined, and not undefined is interpreted as, as true. So undefined is interpreted as false, and not undefined is true. So if this, this becomes true, and then we're going to print assertion fail. All right, so I want you think about that on your own. All right, let's go ahead and load that. And there it is, assertion failed. The assertion that's failing is this one here. So we didn't load the database library. So this, we, we don't want to make that assertion. We just want to assert this. And let's go ahead and try that. And should be OK. It's loaded, no problem. So that's what's going on. They're just uh, all that fancy code that they're doing there. All it's doing is it's just showing you what libraries you load it. And now, so this is working. I'll just demonstrate that again. There it is, no error message. Now, if you don't load the auth module, here it is. That's the auth module right there. I'm going to comment that out. That's the HTML comment right there. See that? Yeah, need to learn how to do that. So we took this out, we turned this into a, this line into a comment, the start comment and comment. And now we're gonna get a failure here and we'll have assertion failed because we don't have the auth. We, won't, we don't have the auth, auth we won't exist. The app won't be able to, it won't return us a, a function reference so to the auth module. Save that again. Let's go ahead and see that fail. Should say assertion failed here. And there it is, assertion failed. That's it. So we want to load auth because that's what we're going to do. We're going to implement auth. And uh, now we got that fixed. Come back. You know, I'm going to clear that. And there we go. All right, let's clean up some, let's, let's cut out some more to junk here. Uh, anyway, this just shows you their code and you know, we don't really need to include that. That was just demonstration code. So it's gonna take that all out. Yeah. And here we go. So we still need this. We still need this F here. And, um, This assertion, uh, we take that out. We just don't need it at this point. It's just for us doing this investigation. This is neat, you know, how that trick works. You know, that's, that's quite interesting. We have to take that out. I don't need it right now. And, um, you know, basically, uh, we don't need this. Let's see, let's see what, what do we need? Well, we got this message here. And uh, I'll tell you what, what we want to do here. And we got to figure out what we're going to do is we're going to have, what we want to do is implement login and log out. So the, the first thing we want to do is when we come in here, we're going to need to have a, like a, a login button or something like that. Uh, let's see how to do this. This is, uh, this is load. You know, we don't even need that. Get element ID. We just take that out. We don't need that. And, um, this is our script. This is the event listener. And I think I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to make this uh, anonymous function again. Bring that back in there like that. And this is the line I saved it because this is the one we're going to need to do. And uh, I'll probably replace that with sample code that we get from the website, from the documentation. 
So here, this is try catch. We're not doing anything that's gonna throw an exception. So I'll just take that out of there. And basically we got nothing here. We're just pairing it down to, to nothing at this point. Um, we're going to need this app. We'll need that for some purpose. We don't know yet. I'm going to get rid of the semicolon. And um, so that, that code is coming. And we're going to, we're going to use this. I want to show you a trick here, this ID message here, uh, something that I like to do. The, um, we can do, we can do this. We could do a uh, document dot uh, get element by ID and I'm going to look up uh, message, right? I'm going to call it MSG. I'm going to shorten it up there. Get element by ID message. That gives us the element and then I'm going to set the, uh, the inner HTML. Actually, there's another one. It's called inner text. Because that's uh, that's a div up there, so I can use inner text, and uh, I'm just going to set that to uh, to high. There we go. And you know, I think I'll take this out too. Let's make it real simple, real real simple here. All right, so we have our function, and uh, you know, this is it takes no arguments, right? And this is the implementation. It just looks up that MSG element and sets the inner text to high. M, oops, I missed that opportunity there. All right, I get rid of the welcome. And this is the, um, this is the, uh, this is our message div here. Uh, you know, it helps me to think if I pare things down to their simplest state so I can focus on the essence of what's going on. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, so I'll, I'll, we're gonna need to modify the document, you know, as we're logging in and logging out, we're gonna need to be printing messages. So this is, I'm getting started, getting ready for that. I look at all this, this uh, style, this is their style. I'm just gonna rip that out. We can put it in our own style block if we want later on. That's not a problem. And here's the body tag, it's got a div, and then it has this script. This is the end of the body element. There we go, look at that, okay. And uh, maybe we don't need that space, doesn't matter. All right, make it pretty, it's easier to read if you make it, uh, if, you, if, you, if you put it into your own words and your own organization, in my experience is, um, it's easier to, to read. Welcome to CSC 440, 405. That's my other class. <clears throat> All right, let's see. So this should say hi. This says nothing now. We'll do this. We'll say, watch, we're going to say, we'll say loading. All right, so we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff and the user is going to say loading. Oh, okay, and then when it's done and this content loaded method runs, they're going to set the Replace loading with high. Oh, that'll be near instantaneous here because we're not doing much. All right, there we go. Loading, oh, it's not near instantaneous. See, it's gonna stay at loading. Line 17, missing parenthesis. Line 17, right there. And you see that, that closes that, that brace up there. But we, we're, this is inside of a function call, so we're gonna, we're going to close that parenthesis right there. All right, I'm going to clear the console and reload. It still says loading. What the heck? So get element by ID msg. This is msg dot inner text. What the heck? Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe it's not inner text. Let me try inner HTML. Let's reload that. Loading. Something is going on there. DOM content. What is going on? Document. 
MSG. I know it should look obvious to you guys, and I don't see it, right? I know when I look back at this video, I'm saying, oh, how stupid. I didn't see it. It was right in front of my face. Let's see here. So why is this? You know, I want to know, does, is, this, is this the problem? Is the problem this line or is the problem that line? And let's see. And I'll just do a console.log and I'll say, I'm in my funk. I'm in funk. And here, I'll say, um, I'll say before funk. Let's see, do we print before funk? Do we print in funk? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, there's the high. That's because my internet connection is so slow that it's taking a while for these things to load. All right. So that code is all right. I just had to do, I need to move. Next time I recorded a video, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna operate a little closer to my, my router. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, so we got this working, that high is working. And uh, once again, we'll take a look at how slow that is. All right, now we wanna, we wanna get some authentication going. And it's gonna be something like the following. Let's see, it's gonna be you know what? I think I'm going to, this is a good pause point. I've done a lot of stuff already. We've, we've gotten a, Oh, one more thing to do. I think I'll do one more thing, which is let's deploy the app into the ho the remote, the hosting environment. I uh, see this is running now. This, this here that you see running is the, uh, is the emulator. So that's why we're, we're running locally here, all right? And this is the, the directory we're working in. And this is what it looks like. This is the public folder. We were just modifying that one file. And um, we've got this Firebase JSON. Let's take a look at that real quick, Firebase JSON. And some configuration, so hosting, the public folder is called public, all right? And this is saying ignore. I don't know what's going on here. What does this ignore refer to? Oh, so the, 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 maybe the hosting server needs to ignore uh, Firebase.json. It, it ignores node modules. This is installed when you uh, use functions. So this is not, not needed right now, but... Um, I don't think we're gonna add functions to this uh, project, but in case we do, we'll leave that there. And this ignores uh, everything that starts with a dot. The star star means go into subfolders recursively. And this is a function, uh, anything that starts with a dot, a file name or directory name starts with a dot. It's considered a hidden file. And uh, so, and this star will match with anything following the dot. So that will be ignored by the, um, you know, by the um, the hosting system. So these these files are not to be deployed. They're not to be transferred to the remote uh, system. There, and uh, I think that's what it means. Actually, I'm just sort of hypothesizing here. I'm not running any tests with. I don't want to get into that. This is rewrites and I don't know, I'm just going to skip over this. Emulators, okay, we have a hosting emulator, it's listening port. So here, obviously we could change the configuration, right? So I could do 5001, right? Let's try that. Suppose we wanted to change it. So I shut that down and I serve and I'm getting nothing there. What is going on? There it goes. See, it's my internet connection is bad. Oh, look at that. It still comes up 5,000. It did not do anything with that setting. So why is that? 
why does that show 5,000? Let's see if this still runs. Loading, yeah, it's still there. It is still there. And if I do this one here, nothing. Why, what is going on? Why is that? How come this offset is setting is not to configure the port? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's there for, so I better set it back. So that that's an unknown. Now, here I shut down the server. See, the server's not running right now, right? I shut it down. And now, not even 5,000 is going to work because I don't have a local server running, see? What we want to do is Firebase deploy. So we're going to push, you know, basically our public folder and some of the configuration around it. We're going to deploy that into um, the, uh, the hosting environment. So here we go, deploying to serve prog dash this, deploying, beginning deploy, found one file in public. All right, that's our index.html file. File upload complete, deploy complete. And here is the hosting URL right there. So if we go there, we should see our app running. And there we go. Now this is, uh, this is accessible on the internet. There it is, loading and then hi, there it is. So we got our, we got our app uh, deployed and the next step will be to add authentication. So we'll have like some kind of a secret message that the user has to authenticate. Once they authenticate, then we show the message and then they can log out and then they get to the login screen. They don't see the message anymore. That's the next step. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll save that for the next, uh, the next session that we have here. All right, so I think that wraps it up. Let me think, is there anything else I wanna talk about? Is there anything else I wanna say here? This, uh, this T here, and uh, see it's showing, yeah, this, oh, this is for the Firebase Analytics, You're supposed to include that in there. And, you know, we already have this, and we already have a NIT. We just didn't put this in there with, with the Firebase Analytics. Um, we did turn it on, so why don't we put it in there? Why don't we put it in there? So I'm gonna, let me stick that in there. And let's go ahead and, well, I'm not sure where to put it. Do we put it in here? we put it there? I think we do. Not sure. And I'm going to put defer on there. And I'll have to talk about this defer later. This is a very important uh, concept. And uh, maybe I'll get into that uh, later. Or you can read about that on your own. I think that's where that goes. And let's just check to see that doesn't result in any kind of error message. I'll do Firebase uh, serve. Firebase serve runs the, the local emulator. There we go, let that initialize. There we go. We should be listening to port 5000. Let's go back to port 5000. And remember I got the got the disable cache there, so I don't have to reload on that, right? Did it automatically. And let's see, unexpected in the JSON, what is this? Could not, uh, I'm not sure that that's this. Let me reload, see if there's any messages. Uh, looks good, right? There's some notes about what we're getting here. See, there's the Firebase analytics on that. And uh, hi, so. We'll leave that in there. Control C to shut that down. And uh, there it is. And I'm gonna remove this T. I don't want that hanging around. Clean that up. And uh, what's in the readme file? Uh, oh, this is my old readme. 
This is my old README file. And I think what I want to do is um, get rid of that. I don't want to put that in the repo. So I do git status. The last thing I'm going to do is put this stuff in the course repository. And I, I don't want to put that in there. So let's see. I'm gonna let me do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy uh, that README to um, out of there. Better make sure there's a README there. There we go. No README there. Copy the README out of there, and um, I'm just going to clean this out. Yeah, just some notes here. Didn't have to look at them. All right, so just to clean that out, the README is empty. And uh, so I could get status. Yeah, I'm going to do git add. And run git status again. And you'll see that these files have been added to what's called the index or the staging environment, staging. And now I'm going to do git push. Uh, before I push, let me show you here that uh, this is the code for the course. By the way, I started with code in here and I, I rebuilt the, the repository because I wanted to get rid of that junk. Actually, I had something in there that, that didn't belong in the repository. So I, I needed to take something out anyway. So I, 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 I wiped the system. So let's go ahead and push. We're going to push to the uh, remote repository our changes. And once again, I've got slow internet here. Let's see if it's going to go through. Uh, that's taking some time. There we go. Oh, I forgot to commit. Hit commit. And I don't want to go into too much time because I'm going to get going. Get push. Reload. And there we go. All right, that's it for today. And let's shut this down. Let's see.